You're watching Local 44 Morning Brew, local news that matters. At this place in history, we're in Castleton. We're on the campus of the university with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What are we talking about? So we're going to talk about the painter James Hope. Pretty famous now in Vermont, not so much in his lifetime, but beautiful, beautiful artwork. And what's his connection to where we're standing right now? So he lived right behind us. Okay. Uh, so the sign is behind us, and you see that nice little Gothic Revival white building, which beautiful. is now Campus Security Building. That was his home and studio. So he wasn't from Vermont originally. He was Scotch. Um, he was born in Scotland. Ultimately, his father took, took him, and they moved to Canada. They immigrated to Canada, but then his dad died in a cholera epidemic, and you had this young kid, 15 years old. He walked from the Maritimes of Canada all the way down to Vermont wow. to apprentice as a wheelwright. And how did he make the transition into art then? So he had some health issues and um, at one point had some injuries that uh, prevented him from practicing his, his craft. And so he picked up painting and he had a natural aptitude for it. Um, he took a few lessons, but he never really attended any academies. But he was so good, he decided to hang his proverbial shingle outside and start uh, painting portraits. So he really liked to do landscapes. And that's how he ended up here in Castleton. He taught art classes here in addition to doing portrait painting. And and ultimately built this house, which was both a studio and his home. And now when we were talking beforehand, you mentioned some sort of school of thought in the artist community that he adhered to. What is that? Yeah, so it's called the Hudson River School. Okay. And kind of mid 19th century, uh, we know it as, you know, Alfred Bierstadt and um, Asher B. Durand did these great images, usually of the Adirondacks in that Hudson River area, hence the Hudson River Valley School, but they did paint all over. The idea was to show this um, American landscape and kind of a rough and ready landscape. It was beautiful, uh, but also untouched somewhat by man. And you see a lot of that in his later work. He was touched by the American Civil War. He was an older man at the time that the war broke out. He ended up enlisting and he was a captain um, of a regiment that came out of Castleton and he fought early on in the war until he got so sick that he really he couldn't participate anymore. But he did sketch a lot of his experiences. And after the war, he painted these grand sweeping landscapes in this Hudson River Valley School form, but with armies in them and battles. So it's, it's a very unique huh. imagery of the American Civil War. And he's probably best known at this point for those images, even though it was a very small part of his work. Did he stay in Vermont for the rest of his life? Not quite. Uh, he received a commission to paint Watkins Glen, New York. So he moved there with his family and he painted the Glen. He had a, a gift shop and a studio there and he sold paintings to folks. Where can people go to view his artwork? Well, I'm glad you asked <laughs> because they can come right to the Vermont Historical Society. There you go. We have one of his most famous um, Civil War paintings in the museum in Montpelier. You can see paintings of his at the Shelburne Museum. You can see some paintings right here at Castleton University. And if you are traveling um, down to Antietam Battlefield, he painted um, an amazing mural of the Antietam uh, Battle, which he participated in, and that's on view at the Visitor Center uh, on that battlefield. At this place in history. 